Uh, hey guys, I am Rafael Reich and you are seeing this profile in the United Gozes <laughs> channel. And I just made top 32 at the YCS Anaheim. This was my first event on the United States for the YCS champ Euro Championship Series. And I'm super proud of my result. I made 9-2 in the Swiss rounds. And I, what I feel like it's way more funnier is that I made a weird deck, deck build decision. I, I decided to not play Ryzen or Malice, the most popular decks from the new collection. So well, while I was testing for this event, I was like, man, Ryzo takes the bear here and loses. I mean, Ryzo takes the bear and loses, and Madis takes Lanceia and loses. So I was not feeling comfortable playing this, this kind of decks because you could play for some, like, you could lose to weird players, to bad players, just because they flip with some cards. So I tried to find a mid solution for whatever was better, for like, don't have losing conditions like that. I ended up deciding to play a Fiend Smith Kashira deck. Uh, I'm not playing the Magical Musketeer cards. The Magical Musketeer cards, they actually perform very poorly into the, into the Rhizo matchup, especially when they go for that nader. So, yeah, I decided to go like as pure as I could and make this deck to destroy Rhizo. Funny enough, I lost two Rhizos, I lost one, but one was totally my fault. I forgot about the existence of Typhoon. I could have one if I remember the card, if I played around it. And the other loss was to on top 32 and when Game one, I win. Game two, he, I was in control of the game. He just talents take off the token of Nibiru, attacks for game, and I instantly lo lose. And game three, I go first and I brick. <laughs> what can I do, right? So yeah, I'm super proud. I would like to say a shout out to my team. To, uh, if you don't know me, I have my own YouTube channel. You can look for the right to Yu-Gi-Oh! for English content or for right to Yu-Gi-Oh! for Portuguese content. And well, with that being said, let's go for the deck profile. Um, I played three engravers, I played three lacrimas, I played two tracks, one Lurry and one Desiree. So I didn't play the Magical Musketeer package. I feel like you never wanted a normal summon then, especially against uh, that Nader bo board. And this deck is supposed to be insane against Ryzo. So that's why I played only this engine because it's the most resourceful one, it's the better engine overall. So that's why I'm on it. Um, for the Kashiras, uh, triple Unicorn, triple Fen here, one Terraforming, and two Pressured Planet. Uh, I was almost not playing this, this tree, but I feel like the meta is not only Rhizos, and so many times you can just stop the Rhizo, but I'm siding them out while I'm going second against Rhizo. But anyway, they are very good consistency cards, they help you a lot because they get you Fen here situations, they get, get you a Unicorn on the situations you need, so. I ended up liking these cards a lot, and it's very special, important to have to have farming because I'm playing Trust on the side deck, and also uh, you draw cards in this deck with the Necrokeep Princess, for example. So if you can go like deep on your deck, like taking out an extra card of your deck, this maximizes your odds of drawing better cards. So that's why I decided to play one to have farming instead of like three field spells. It's worse to draw, but people don't try, don't tend to keep the drawing side deck against you, so it's fine. On birth, oh yeah. And then now as a super defensive deck, triple purge, triple impermanence, triple Nibiru, triple ghost ogre, triple ash blossom, triple effect veilers. Um, this is my hand trap lineup. Uh, and then I had like three more spaces. I feel like this is super standard, nothing really big to say here. But then I had three more spaces and I was trying like everything. I tried mourners, for example. I tried it for bells, for example, and they are just like not that good. Because playing this deck, what you need to do, you need to do like powerful changes against your opponent. You need to stop your opponent. And then that hand traps like Mourner, Bell, they were even bad or they were super easy to play around. So that's why I ended up playing just these 18 hand traps. And then on the three last spots of my main deck, I decided to play three copies of Forbidden Droplet. So Forbidden Droplet is super important in this deck because it's an out detonator, like it's simple out for detonator and this is super important because dual drive is never resolving against you and also uh, they can also go for Baguska, so you go for Droplet and it is super strong. A lot of times what happened is my opponent, I went for Fen here, effect, my opponent on Rise of Board did impermanence because Fen here by itself forces the... Fen here by itself forces the detonator, so he never went to detonator the Fen here. So the impermanence the fan here, I chain droplet, send the fan here, negate the detonator, and this is like super, super strong. This card is not good while you are going first, like you already draw any of the other cards while you're going first, but I just side them out while I'm going first. I feel like, honestly, the biggest side deck things you do 
are involved in these six cards. This go out when you go first, this go out when you go second. Because this is super, 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 super wasteful of resources and you don't have enough resources on this. But this is the only solution I could find to try to play around everything the riser could do. And now for the extra deck, um, I guess this is standard. The one Moon, two Requiem, one Wagnum Day, one Necro Keep, two Desiris, one Caesar. And then I feel like what I could expand is that I played one, one, only one sequence and only one Lars. Um, basically, the thing here is, if your opponent Unicorn your sequence, for example, I would say, oh, it would have been so good to have a sequ second sequence. But what is going to happen in most of cases is that he is going to Unicorn Rip on their turn and also they are going to Unicorn Hip on your turn. So, if they ban Desiree, for example, you are such in a bad spot because this turns off many of your good interactions on this deck. That's why I ended up playing one, one sequence and I don't think it was necessary to play one more copy of it. Uh, if it was our Lars, it's a very good card against Malice because this is basically a Desiree that detaches two materials cost. Uh, but the important thing is, while it has an excess material, you cannot target it with monster effects. So if your opponent starts with X Rizo, for example, sending the sending the aggregator, they cannot target the Lars, and that's super important. If the format was just about Rizo, I wouldn't even play the Caesar. But you have a lot of other decks where Caesar is super strong, you are still playing against Snake Eyes, you are still playing against Malice, for example, so that's why you have to play both. And then, one speed, yeah, this is just mandatory. I guess Typhoon is also mandatory, this is super important against Rizo matchups, because Rizo has a problem. He's not good on keeping follow-up on the hand. So in many cases, he invests so much on the field, especially while playing through hand traps. He invests so much on the field, and the fact that you are able to just go Typhoon, bounce that nader, attack over, do a drive, it's super, super strong. And this is very, very important. This wins you a lot of the games, because this takes your opponent out of their resources. And we are playing a grind of resources with this deck, so... They are not only leading with the Typhoon, they are playing against Typhoon and then, then I'm gonna have Lacrim on the Graveyard that sent Phantom from Paradise. That's why this card is super important. And now, I feel like this three can be like most odd things. Chaos Angel is super common in this deck, but this card is crazy. This card is super, super important for the Rhizo matchup because the deck doesn't have any in-engine outs for Chaos Angel. And you can easily make it on like Dark and Light because you have the Necrocrypt Princess and you have the Lacrim. Uh, this happened against Chupin Shu in the, my side feature match on round 10. He just like, he made full board, I break the board with hand traps, with droplets, and then I just go Chaos Angel pass, and he couldn't beat the Chaos Angel. That's super, 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 super important. Like, this card is super good in overall situations. The fact that you can just do this easily, and that Rizo, the, the main deck of the format, doesn't have any way to out it, it's super important. IP Mask Arena is there because when you get Nibiru, when you start with Unicorn plays, for example, and you get Nibiru at the end of them, uh, you are never using Birth before, so you are going to just use Birth, summon back Unicorn, go for IP, and then you are going to have Lacrim on the Graveyard to summon back the Requiem, the Requiem Tributes, and then your IP turns into SP interaction. That's super strong, that's super important, because this, this deck kind of struggles against Nibiru. Like, Nibiru is strong against this deck, so yeah, having a way to play around it is important. And then I was very chill with my extra deck. The 14 cards here, they are very strong, very good enough. And I was missing one card. And then I ended up deciding to play Zeus. Uh, I never made this card, but I don't think there was anything better to run on this extra deck because, yeah, I mean, this card is way better when you play M7. This card is way better when you play Gaia Charge, for example. And I'm not playing any of them. So I have less room to go for Zeus. But it's still, at the same point, the fact that you can, for example, talents, and I'm running talents on the side deck, talents to take the Zeus, is to take the Maxis and then go for Zeus is super, super strong. And also, besides that, the fact that you sometimes, you being able to do it, it's important, I guess. Never came up, but it's good. Well, now for the side deck, uh, triple Lanceus, double Miskif of the Gnomes, and one Bar here. Yeah, this, these are the auto win button cards, I guess. And then I also played triple, uh, double talents and one trust. So I was in three talents, but I felt like instead of playing three Miskif of Gnomes, if I played against some weird deck where Miskif is not good, I could just side in this shoe, and this gives me more flexibility. And in situations where I would like to side in the talents going second, I could also side in the trust. So the trust gives me the possibility to look for talents or to go for engine cards like Tract or Terra Farming, for example. That's why I ended up doing this way. And now for the extra cards, I played Triple Rulias. This is the only Mucharme I played. 
because uh, as I explained it, draw and Fualos in this deck, they are not very strong because they are not actually trading anything for opponents. They are just like buying you a turn. And if you have an aggressive deck, like Snake Eye deck, maybe something very aggressive, then bu buying you a turn is all you need. But this deck, it's not that good. It's not that strong. So I just go for Perulius because Perulius, my opponent's not, not, never going to stop to Perulius. He's just going to give me some draws. He's, trying, he's going to make some plays. And then this, on the process, I'm also drawing hand traps. So Perulius is amazing. And then I just change it for the... I change the Kashiro cards with it. So they are basically consistency cards anyway. And then I played Triple Solemn Strike. Uh, I decided to play Solemn Strikes instead of Judgment because the life points are super important on this deck. Uh, you are not running a fast deck, you are going in the slow grind deck. So paying half of your life points is super, super weird. And then the fact that you can grind some games and Strike can hit you for the hand traps, for example, is also super good. So yeah, the card performing amazing. Um, I guess that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Again, thank you for everyone who shout out at me. Thank you for my man who's streaming, is recording this video. Thank you so much. And yeah, with that being said, see you next video. See you next stop and goodbye.